All right, so this is the new monitor panel. There is an app for it for your phone. It's a Jayco in command app. I'd recommend downloading onto your phone. It pairs really easily, and then you can control everything that you see here that we're gonna go over straight from your phone. So the home screen shows everything to get somewhere pretty easily. So you got the climate, which is the thermostats, your lights, you hit your lights, it's gonna to go to all the lights. All the lights you see with the little blue bars are dimmer lights. So you can dim them up or down. And then turn them on or off, you just simply hit the blue button. If they're blue, they're on. If they're dark, they're off. And then like the tanks, show you all your tanks. You got your water uh, pump, water heater, excuse me, on electric, and your water heater on gas. Anytime you see these blue, they're turned on and activated. And then here are all your tanks. Your fresh tank is empty. All of them are empty. We got your gray one, gray two, gray three, black one, and black two. And then you got your motors. So your motors are gonna be your leveling jacks uh, and the stabilizer jacks. So you can do what we did outside also from here where they have the retract all and the auto level. And if you manually wanna control the up or down from the front to the left, to the right, to the rear, you can do them all individually if you wish. And then these are all your slide outs. Slide out one, two, three, and four, and five. The way that the slide outs work, it's usually a circle. So the front left is gonna be the first one, and then it's gonna go around the camper all the way around. And then these are your awning switches. Extend and retract, and to operate the awnings or the slide outs, you just simply hold down, extend, or retract, but you do have to hold the buttons down. Sometimes the bu buttons can be very finicky, so like if you're holding it and then you barely move your finger, it's gonna turn off, so whenever you're holding it down, just make sure you don't have any other fingers on the board and you just hold that area down nice and tight. And then you have uh, the energy, which is mostly just showing uh, your system that is charging. And then you can individually go from there to all of them on the side screen right here. From home, to water system, to your motors, to your thermostat, to your lights. And then this right here shows your tire pressure and the temperature and the refrigerator temperature. And then the thermostat is right here. You have a main and second AC. On this system, you just simply turn it on in the middle and depending on what's over here is how it's gonna operate. So you have cool, auto cool, fan and heat. Um, cool is obviously AC, your fans and heat. Auto cool is a pretty cool feature. If you turn it on auto cool and set a temperature, it has uh, thermostats on the outside and the inside of the unit. So if it's cold outside, it knows to kick the furnace on. If it's hot outside, it knows to kick the AC on. So if you have a temperature that you like to have it all year around, you set it to auto cool, set that temperature, and it does its thing. And then if not, you can come over here. That's the auto cool feature. And then if you go to heat, you have two different methods. You have a heat pump, a furnace, or both. And basically, it just depends on what you want to run. You click what you want to run, set your temperature, and it also does its thing. I always recommend to have the fan on high when you're running the AC, just so sometimes on fan low, it doesn't run the air across the fins fast enough and they'll slowly freeze up. And the second AC is strictly the AC. It doesn't have any heat functions at all. So you just turn it on, you have the auto cool, but it doesn't have the heat side. And then here is a water pump. So if you wanna strictly just easily turn the water pump on, you hit water pump and it's gonna automatically kick it on or kick it off. And then down here is basically kind of an analog extended retract. So if this gets kind of finicky or is not operating properly, you can go to awning two, awning one. Uh, that is how you pair. So you're gonna download the app and then go through the instructions and then go to PA and I think hit retract and that will start pairing your system to your phone and then you have oh, what is that? that's slide five slide four slide three slide two and slide one and then the awnings again this little device up here is how you turn your lights on and off you have the bed ceiling lights you just tap it and it turns it on and off you got the reading lights for the bedroom uh the kitchen the accessories or the accent light, sorry, and then the slide extend and retract, which is gonna be for the bedroom. And then we can walk up into the bedroom. On the bedroom here, you have 110 outlets on both sides. 
and you also have the same little uh, on and off switches for all the lights so you can basically control everything from your bed. You have the bed ceiling, uh, the reading lights, which are right above your bed, and then the kitchen ceiling, the accent uh, lights, and then all lights interior and all lights exterior. So if you're laying in bed and you forgot that you turned some lights on, you can hit all inside and they'll turn them all off or all back on. Same with the outside lights. These sliding doors here, these pocket doors, you just want to make sure that they're locked in before you start traveling. If not, they can slide around and bang against each other, possibly causing damage to themselves or the camper. <clears throat> Inside the bathroom here, you have your toilet, his and her sinks, and the shower. In my opinion, this little shower lock back here is one of the most important parts of the bathroom area. You want to hear that thing lock and clip in before you start traveling, because if not, this is safety glass. If it slides around and bangs around too much, it will shatter. Besides that, it's a normal shower. It has hot and cold. It's got a little chair in there and everything. Then you have an exhaust fan in here, too. You simply just crank up the handle which will pop the lid up and then you can turn the fan on. It has four speeds, one, two, three, and four. So if you keep clicking it, it's gonna go faster, faster, and faster. And then it also has a switch over here on the, door, or on the wall where you can hit down for off and hit up for on. And then these are the two light switches. You got your accent lights and then your main lights. Close this before I forget. Underneath the bed, you have some storage. Oh, sorry. Washer dryer hook up in here. All right, back to it. Yeah. Underneath here, underneath the bed, you have storage. This is where you have your extra chairs and all your vacuum parts accessories. In front of the bed, you have an emergency escape window. So to operate the emergency escape window, you simply just pull it out. It has a little lock like this. You can use it as a normal window. Or in case of emergencies, you can frantically pop the screen out. This will go all the way through, allowing you to lift the window all the way up and jumping on out. It's kind of a long fall, but a broken bone's better than burning alive. And then you have your TV here too, and then a power charging station, which has a 12 volt outlet and two USB charging ports. And then obviously you have tons of storage for the bedroom, which is nice. Down here in the kitchen area, you have your second bathroom, it has a toilet and a sink, and then you also have light switches around the corner to operate the accent lights, and then the main lights, and then also a switch for the fan and uh, up top to where you can turn the fan on and raise the lid. These little black things that you see throughout the camper or the thermostats I was telling you about earlier that helps maintain and control the auto cooling system through the thermostat. This guy right here operates the fan way up there so you don't have to get a ladder or jump up there or anything. You basically hit vent open and it's gonna raise the vent lid. There it goes. So it's gonna raise the vent lid, and then you can turn the fan on. Once again, it has one, two, three, and four, so you can adjust how fast or slow it goes. Um, it does have a rain sensor on it. That's what that little blue umbrella is for. So whenever it senses it getting wet, it will automatically start closing. So if you accidentally leave it open and go somewhere and it starts raining, it will close by itself. But that is the only vent throughout the camper that actually does that. The two bathroom ones do not. And to close it, you just turn fan off and it'll turn the fan off and close the lid all on its own. Down here around the corner, you have a uh, GFI, so if you plug into an outlet and it does not produce electricity, come and check the GFI. It simply might have popped like it does at the house, and then you just got to reset it. This right here is a secondary water pump switch for the smaller water pump in the uh, underbelly storage, which uh, basically you turn it on and off, and that will allow you to feed water to the refrigerator and also the water uh, little filter thing right there. This right here is a uh, LP slash carbon monoxide detector, 
It is going to go off if it smells propane or carbon monoxide. So if you hear this thing go off, you want to turn off the propane tanks and quit using the LP system because either something's not burning right, releasing carbon monoxide, or there's a propane leak and it smelled it. Another thing that'll cause that thing to go off is like harsh cleaning chemicals, a lot of aerosol cleaning chemicals and things like that. If it picks up that kind of odor, it might also give you, you know, a false alarm. So if you're in here cleaning with those kind of products, I recommend to uh, have some windows and the doors open and just some ventilation so it doesn't pick it up. The refrigerator is just a household refrigerator. You got your water filter right here in the door because the unit is winterized. And then you have your water and ice dispensers right in front. You got your convection microwave. Uh, it works like a microwave or a convection oven, and I've heard a lot of positive reviews about it. And then around the corner is how you turn all your lights on and off again. Uh, and then also this actually has a water pump feature onto it. So if you're here cooking and you forgot to turn the water pump on, you don't have to go all the way to the door. You just simply hit water pump, and it's going to kick it on. Here, just got some storage and a pull-out tray to make it, things easier to get to from the back. And then the stove here, uh, basically how you light it is you're going to push in the knob and turn it to high and it's going to spark up. And then you just turn it to the flame that you want. All four of them do the same thing. So whenever you, discon whenever you go to put the unit in storage, I always recommend to disconnect the battery drain the fresh tank, drain the water heater, and turn off the propane tanks. So when you turn the propane tanks off, air seeps into the gas line. So whenever you first turn it back on, you're going to have air between you and your gas. So whenever you first turn it back on, I recommend to come in here before you light any of the other gas items. So come in here and turn two of the igniters on. You might have to hold it down for a minute, maybe a little bit more. But once they flame up, I recommend turning the other two on and letting the four burners burn off for about 30 seconds up to a minute, which will purge most of the air out of the gas lines. And then all the other gas items like the uh, water heater and the furnace should light right up without going to a lockout mode. If anything like that ever comes uh, and happens and it does lock out, all you do is you turn the item off for about 10 seconds and then turn it back on again and it'll go through the relighting process. Yes. How do you light the oven? Uh, the oven is uh, pretty much the same way. They've made a lot of advances. So basically you're gonna turn it to this little flame, sim uh, flame symbol and hold it in. And it takes a lot longer than the uh, than the stove top. So you can kind of see the blue flame down there. Once you see that blue flame, then you can turn it to the temperature you want to cook at, and it's going to flame on up. I recommend to never leave that in pilot light mode because if the pilot light gets blown out without your knowledge, it's just gonna start filling the oven full of gas. So you either have it all the way on or all the way off. You got some USB charging ports and 110 outlets there. You have your kitchen TV. And the kitchen TV goes up and down just by this button here, down and up. Over here we have the dinette, which has all your remotes. It looks like we might have to go get another Insignia remote. Uh, so this one right here is going to operate your radio. This one here operates your fireplace. And then these two operate your TVs, and we have to get another one. But all the TV remotes will work all the TVs. They're not individually, so you can mismatch them or whatnot. These right here are your keys. Uh, Jayco now does a key to like system. So this key right here unlocks every storage compartment door and your main door. If you ever need some more, you can go online and like Google Bauerproducts.com or whatnot and go onto their website and you have a 957 key and you basically, you know, kind of order the 957 key and they'll ship them right to your house if you need some more. And then you have your water filter here for the outside filter that we went over earlier. And then all your reading material, uh, everything's been, uh, anything that's been installed in the unit has either a warranty card or information in there, anything from the smoke detector to the uh, refrigerator and everything in between. So down here by the steps is uh, basically the vacuum system. You have a little sweep tray. 
Basically, you sweep all your things up to here, lift that up, and it'll suck them right on in. And then this is how you plug into those uh, parts and accessories that are underneath the bed. You just simply turn it in there, and it's going to turn on and start activating. Right here is your inverter. So the inverter basically turns the 12 volt into 110, allowing your refrigerator to run while you're driving down the road. So I recommend just to always leave this on so if you happen to lose power at night or while you're not at the camper, you won't have spoiled food whenever you get back or in the morning. It'll automatically run on the battery until either you notice your you know, lights are dimming and you lost power or until you get back. But I do just recommend leaving that on and what that does is basically just takes over what used to be the gas side of the refrigerator. So when the refrigerator is plugged into 110, it's gonna run off 110 once it unplugs, it's going to switch over and run off the converter. And that's how you turn it on and off. Inside the living room here, we have the radio, which we saw the remote on the table. And then you have A, B, and C speakers. Uh, a and B are inside, C is outside. And... Uh, it also has Bluetooth, so you can connect your phone to it, play any kind of music apps you might have. And uh, the only thing I recommend is uh, whenever it's quiet time to turn the C speakers off so your neighbors aren't being annoyed by your music in the middle of the night. Or if someone wants to take a nap in here, you can turn A and B off, have C on, and be jamming out outside. The fireplace is really nice. It heats up the area uh, very quickly and uh, you know if it's not that hot out and you don't want to you know if it's not that cold out and you don't want to heat up the whole camper with the furnace you can just turn the fireplace on so the fireplace also has a remote that's on the kitchen table and also buttons on it so you have a button to turn it on you have a button here that adjusts the flame how bright or dim it is this one is your uh, heat so low heat or high heat and it blows out right here and then you can actually adjust the temperature to kick it on or off at a certain degree. I think it goes from 70 to 82. And then eco mode. And then also has a timer on it, so you can set a timer for it to turn off after a certain time, which goes all the way up to 8 hours. And you can turn the whole system back off. You have your couches, the slide outs, you have another uh, vent, roof vent up here. Once again, this one just cranks up manually, but it has no fan or no rain sensor on it. And then you have your recliners. The recliners, they have lights on them. They have heat. They have massage. And then they extend and recline. Or recline pretty much all the way back. You have this window back here and it has a shade on it which goes on down and you can lock it on in. All the windows have the shades just like this to where you pull it down and give it a little tug and it's going to lock in. To unlock it, you give it a little tug and it's going to go right back up. Above my head here is the Wi-Fi uh, and then you turn it on right here and you can either scan this code which will give you information or inside the paperwork also has like the pen and the access code to hook your phone up to it. Um, I think that might be good. Besides like obviously running the rooms in and stuff. Um, you think I missed anything?